Hi, I'm Lo Myrick. I'm a speaker, workshop facilitator, life coach, and mental health professional. I'm also a former D1 and D2 athlete, and today I'm here to bring you my top 10 tips and tools for student athletes. So let's dive in. Probably the number one concern and issue I hear from student athletes on a consistent basis is that they feel like they don't have enough time. I totally get it. You're in school. There's a lot going on. You have to practice and you have a lot on your mind. The one thing that I usually bring up that always brings me eye rolls is how much time are you spending on social media? In your phone, you can actually see it will track how much time you spend on different apps. So I challenge you to go on your phone right now, see how much time you're spending on social media per day. That time could be used for recovery, for more sleep, for all kinds of things. So that's the first tip I have for time management is manage your social media time. And if you want to take the challenge to the next level, take at least a week or two off of social media. Just delete all those apps for a week or two. It'll help you reset and recalibrate. I have done this exercise with hundreds, probably thousands of people at this point. And about 50% of them end up coming back to me and just saying, I'm leaving, I'm getting rid of social media for the rest of the season or the rest of the semester. Or people in business will say they're not even going to re-download the apps. So I'm not saying that you can't use social media. I'm not saying that it's not a great tool when used properly. And it can be really informative and help you with a lot of things. However, we have to make sure that we have a healthy relationship with social media and all technology in general. I heard a great quote one time and it goes, use technology, don't let it use you. So that is one tip for time management. My second tip is use your calendar. Make sure that you're blocking off time for studying or writing papers or whatever it might be in your practice time so that you know when you have time, you have free time. And if you do bump something, make sure that you have time for it later in the week. Using your calendar is a very easy way. All of your phones have calendars, or if you want to write it down and get an old school paper planner, um, whatever works best for you. But taking that time to just use your calendar and your schedule will free up your time in so many ways. My second tip is for you to be proactive about mental health. This is a daily practice that you need to build and create. If we do not proactively take care of our mental health every day, it's going to not improve and it could also decline, especially when you're under stress. If you have all of these external factors coming at you, which I'm sure that you do, you need to make sure that you're being proactive about that. So what are some things you can do to be proactive about your mental health on a daily basis? I got you covered. Breathing intentionally, number one, just make time to take three deep breaths. Let's do one right now. Close your eyes, take an inhale through your nose, and exhale through your mouth. One deep breath can just change your whole state. Try deep breathing for just one minute, especially when you're stressed or in those transition times, like before you go into a, uh, an exam or before you go to practice or before you're competing, take a couple deep breaths and it will change your state. It will help your body be more alert. You'll be calmer and more in tune and able to function at a higher level, both mentally and physically. Next, practicing gratitude. It's a very, very powerful pr practice. Even thinking about just three things you're grateful for every morning. And as a next step to that, if you wanna write them down, that's even gonna have a bigger impact. Being real with people that you trust. If you're having a hard time, let them know, let people that you love and care about and trust know what's going on, whether that's a friend, a teammate, a trusted coach. Telling people what's going on with you relieves some of the pressure of you carrying that burden alone. Other people can't solve your problems for you, but they can help you lessen the burden and lighten the load. And oftentimes just telling other people about the problem, saying it out loud, getting it out of our head can diminish the amount of pressure we feel about it. Similar to telling people about your problems and leaning on others for support, 
ask for help when you need it. There's nothing weak about it. It's actually a strength and takes courage to ask for help. And I guarantee that whatever you're going through is going to be so much easier when you do. Make sure you're taking care of your body. We're going to talk about sleep in a little bit, but doing the recovery things that you need to do. If you need to go in and do extra warm ups to warm up early from practice, do that. If you need to take a nice bath, take an ice bath, have downtime away from technology. Just like the first point that I made, taking downtime away from technology is so important. So make sure that there's some time during the day at the end of the day where you're just off your phone. Maybe just be with your thoughts, reading a book, um, taking a walk, doing something where you're not on a screen is really, really important. If you can get out in nature, that's even better. Have boundaries and make sure that you're saying no. If you're over committing yourself and saying yes to too much stuff, you're going to be overwhelmed. So make sure that you're setting your boundaries properly. Give yourself grace. You're not perfect. No one's perfect. And make sure to celebrate your wins. All of these things are daily mental health practices that you can do. I know I kind of wrapped many things up into one for this point, but be proactive about your daily mental health practice. Number three, use affirmations and mantras. When I work with teams and organizations, I encourage each person to develop one to two mantras or affirmations that helps them stay focused. So what that could look like for you, I am strong. I am resilient. I am fast. I am fast and focused. I am strong and focused. Whatever the affirmation you need to stay focused as you're competing or as you're taking a test, you can create an affirmation statement for any situation. So when you hear the doubt creep up, you can easily replace it with that affirmation statement. Next, this is one of my favorite tools to teach people. If you are feeling frustrated, anxious, confused, stressed in any way, I want you to do this. So make sure that you're breathing. And then what you're going to do is go into what I like to call the whole brain posture. You're going to cross one of your ankles over, and then you're going to cross your arms over one another. You're going to clasp your hands together, and then you can just put your hands down in your lap, or you can fold them up here. You're going to take three deep breaths here, and then you're going to switch it. Okay, so if my left hand was on top, I'm going to switch that. I'm going to switch my ankles, take three more deep breaths here. And then I'm going to put my hands together like this. You can see my fingertips are touching. I'm going to put my hands down in front of me. I'm going to look through the hole and I'm going to take three more deep breaths. This calms and regulates our nervous system. And it also helps connect the left and right side of our brain. The left side of your brain controls the right side of your body and the right side of your brain controls the left side of your body. So you want to make sure they're functioning properly, especially when you're going into practice or a competition. So this is a really great practice to do before you start practice, before you start to compete, just to make sure that your energy is flowing properly and your left and right hemispheres of your brain are are talking. This is actually a practice that was developed originally to help people with ADHD and it successfully helped people with that, but it has so many other benefits as well, even if you don't have ADHD. So I highly, highly encourage you to practice this. Next, having a resilient mindset or how to find motivation on the hard days just focus on what's right in front of you. So if it's just that practice that you need to get through, just focus on that. Don't worry about the rest of the week, the rest of the month, the rest of the semester. Just focus on the moment. Do the breathing and whole brain posture exercises and just come back to the moment. Pick one thing that you want to work on each day. Just one thing and then make that your focus. Don't worry about you know, anything else, try to be in the present moment as much as possible and just focus on that one thing. It's easy to become overwhelmed when we go too far ahead in the future or we're thinking about all of the stuff we have to do in either our sport or in the classroom. So just breathe, let it all go and focus on whatever the task is at hand. Next, sleep. Holy cow, this is huge. Are you getting enough sleep and what is the quality of your sleep? Sleep is when your body repairs from all of the activity and all of the brain activity that you had that day 
and it saves memories. It's also preparing your body for the next day. It's also preparing your brain for the next day. Sleep is so important for higher level executive functioning, for elite levels of competition. If you're not sleeping enough, you are holding yourself back. So make sure you're getting enough sleep. It's different for everyone. Usually most people are somewhere between seven and nine hours. Only you can know that. Make sure that you're not looking at your screen right before you go to bed. Blue light really interferes with our ability to get that deep sleep. You don't want to be looking at any kind of blue light after 10 p.m. Um, And in the middle of the night, like if you can't sleep, don't wake up and pick up your phone. That's just going to throw you off further. So make sure that you have a healthy boundary with your phone either have an alarm clock, have an an old, if you have an old phone or an old iPad or something that you can use to set an alarm, or if you want to use your phone, that's fine. Just try not to get that blue light in your eyes between, they say, at least 10 p.m. and 4 4 a.m. And if you have trouble waking up in the morning, you just need like two to three days of getting up and getting sunlight in your eye early or just being outside as early as possible. If you get up before when it's still dark, if you have morning practice, Um, turning on as many bright lights as you can, taking a cold shower that can really help jumpstart you. Again, you just need like two or three days to get your circadian rhythm back on track. If you want to know more about sleep, circadian rhythms, and all of this stuff, look up Andrew Huberman, the Huberman Lab podcast. He also has a YouTube channel and he's on Twitter. Um, He talks about sleep. He talks about all of this. His science is incredible. I encourage you to go there and check it out if you want to learn more. Number eight, visualizing. Visualizing is a really powerful tool. Visualize yourself doing whatever your sport is perfectly, executing the move, the maneuver, the play. Visualize yourself doing it perfectly because that perfect repetition is what's going to work. You don't even have to do it that long, even just like 10 minutes a day, or if you want to do like 30 minutes, three times a week, take time to visualize yourself and what you ideally want it to look like. And that muscle memory will start to form. Number nine, you've got to buy into the process, buy into your coaches, get on the same team as them, believe in the process, believe you can do it. If you're constantly doubting yourself or your teammates or your coaches, you are going to create a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if you think we're not doing enough, you're going to end up not doing enough and create an atmosphere of tension and failure. So whatever you focus on grows. Having those affirmations, those mantras, if you feel uneasy about something, have a chat with your coach, but trust the process, trust yourself, trust that everything's coming to you in the perfect timing. You can do this. Last, be kind to yourself, relax, have fun. Don't forget why you wanted to play this sport in the first place when you were a kid. Know that your 100% might look a little bit different day to day and that's okay, that's actually normal. You're not a robot, you are a human being. And if you need a little bit more recovery, make sure you're doing the things you need to do to take care of yourself. Play, have fun, and just enjoy it. Don't worry about the end outcome all of the time. Goals are important. Achievements are important. But also remember, those achievements are not tied to your self-worth. You are worthy regardless of how you perform. You are worthy regardless of the outcome or the results. You are an incredible human being all on your own. I hope you enjoyed this list. If you're interested in taking this a step further, I work with teams and organizations all the time. Talk to your coach, talk to your administration about booking me for a session, or I even do um, group coaching on a regular basis with some teams. I know that whatever that you are going through, you're going to get through and that you can achieve whatever it is that you want. I'm rooting for you. You got this. Follow me here for more on mindset and wellness and make it a great day.